Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. I'm sitting down in my big black chair which squeaks now and then. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and please only watch the video when you can safely close your eyes. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Uh, it's such a boring introduction. But then it's supposed to be boring, so hey. So welcome to the 100th edition. The 100th episode of this, whatever it is, I don't even know anymore. But yeah, this thing that I do, this let me bore you to sleep. And thank you for joining me. Who'd have thought I'd do a hundred of them? I mean, that's, that's nearly a hundred hours. Because most of them last about an hour. Some last less sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. And some last more sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Uh, I've had recordings that have lasted half an hour there's been some that lasted an hour like you know exactly kind of on the dot I don't know how many of those there are but I don't have many that were short you know like half an hour long the, I've got a few that were about 40 minutes long But still, I think that's, they're kind of in the minority as well. Because I think, I would say that pretty much, uh, yeah, the majority, I would say probably 95%, if not more, of these recordings have been... 50 minutes or more or longer I said that or more or longer like it's two different things but that's the original feeling that I had when I was kind of thinking of the word longer rather than more Someone asked me, uh, Rachel asked me, would I be making a special edition, you know, uh, having a, a party to celebrate the 100th edition or episode of this? And I, th I think I replied, yeah, I'm going to have a party in my bath. And I, I was going to write, I'm going to have a party in my pants. But that was just, I thought, no, that might sound rude. Um, but then the thing is if I did something like having a celebration that would be a bit it wouldn't really be very boring would it? it you know what I mean it's I've got to keep remember, you know keep to the boredom aspect of this that's the most important aspect is it needs to be boring and which is one of the reasons why I kind of I'm really getting annoyed with this chair you hear it when I do shorter sessions I do them at the moment I've been doing them at my desk you know sitting on a normal chair sitting at the desk but these are long, 
because you know this is an hour and I want to be comfortable I want to be able to just I can't lay down and do them because I'll fall asleep and I can't really sit up in my bed because it's not very comfortable it's comfortable to lay down in the bed uh, you know especially when I lay down head touches a pillow, my head, you know, body gets heavy, my mind starts to just slow down. It's just like automatically I feel relaxed. Even now and then, you know, even during the day or in the evening, you know, whenever, sometimes I'll just lie down in the middle of the bed by the, the sounds like I've got a massive bed I mean, it's you know, twenty foot tall and twenty foot wide, and I'm I'm laying in the middle of it. Um, by the middle, I mean the midsection of it, with my head on the pillow. I quite like to have my pillow, the pillows, fl fluffed up. Is it fluffed up, buffed up, fluffed up? And I have my head supported in the middle between the kind of between the pillows do you know it's quite nice and uh, so that's quite cool as long as my neck is supported that's pretty much the main thing I like to have my neck supported and my head because the, the neck you've got to look after your neck you've got to look after all of yourself because, you know, I think the body is precious. And I, I think I'm more in tune with that now as I get older. And I just think of some of the things that I used to be able to do and some of the things that I'd still like to do and maybe some of the things that physically I'm not quite able <laughs> not quite able to do anymore or there's things that I don't even attempt see you know when you go somewhere and there's a metal railing around it uh, I don't mean a prison um, or a zoo but I mean there's for example if I come out of the train station there's a metal railing it goes all the way around and you have to walk it's not a long walk but it's a good few minutes walk to get to the traffic lights to then cross and walk around the railings again and it's, it's there for protection and which is great and it goes under a bridge it's a very old bridge it looks it looks like at one point you can imagine if you go back far enough Romans were we're urinating against the sides of the bridge. It's just, I think it's quite old. I do actually live in the oldest recorded town of my country. And as you know, my country is a very, very old country. So, uh, technically, I think we're all, all the countries are pretty much the same age, aren't they? It's just we don't, I guess if you, I don't know if you rename a country then it becomes a, a young country but it's, even if it's still this, sadly, the, the same area but it's been given a different name uh, for whatever reasons just like America it's a young country but it's not really it's, it's perhaps been there for millions of years it's just it's it's new with the name the name is new like not new but was it a few hundred years old is it a few hundred how many years old is it it's about is it 400 two, 300 I don't know but in England it's it's quite old regarding the actual I don't know, I think we've got uh, 
we've got buildings in, in England that are older than some countries. So yeah. And I, I live in one of the oldest, so the oldest, um, this used to be the capital of England. Colchester used to be the capital of England and or Britain I suppose it was called then and then they moved it to I'm sure it used to be Bath as well at one point but they moved it to London for some reason but uh, that's probably more to do with trade and because of the Thames the river and all the maybe the ships coming in and who knows I don't know I don't care enough to research it. Uh, I was very surprised to to find out the other day, just by accident, because I was I was researching Winston Churchill and just looking at his ancestors, and his ancestors were rich. He came from money. You know, his his father was the Chancellor of the Exchequer, I think, at one point. And so his his, his relatives were involved in politics and uh, they had power, you know, within the country, had influence going back centuries. Well, yeah, centuries, because it's quite a few uh, lifetimes. So, yeah, it's, it's going back a long time. But what I didn't realise is Churchill's paternal great-great-great-grandfather was also uh, Princess Diana's... I think, I think it was Churchill's great great grandfather was Princess Diana's great 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 grandfather so you add one on because obviously Churchill was uh, a lot older than Princess Diana she's yeah I suppose Churchill would be more the father age for her is that I don't know but anyway that's and they are actually related by blood like paternal is actually you know not not by marriage but by actual not regurgitation uh you know where the the willy in the womb you know the all that stuff all of the procreation stuff and <laughs> the willy in the womb that, that's going to be the name of my it's going to be the name, <laughs> the name of my uh, autobiography the willy and the womb by Jason Newland I know that if I ever did I don't know produce a book and if it was successful and stuff and uh, and one of the, the people, people will be introducing me as Jason Newland. Newland. It's not Newland, it's Newland. Land. It's like. You never ever will you ever speak to an estate agent. And they say, oh, it's got four bedrooms and there's two acres of Lund. Two acres of Lund? What's that? No, there's two acres of Lund. The garden, there's two acres of Lund. What, in the garden? No, the garden. Garden. Two, two, two... Two acres of Lund. What's Lund? Lund, you know Lund. 
as in Jason Newland. Who's Jason Newland? He's this bloke that makes absolute pointless recordings about nothing and actually feels like he's contributing to society in some way. Ah, I never heard of him. Jason Newland? Oh, no. Is he... What's he like? Oh, he's very, very handsome. Very, very handsome. Very distracting. Distracts. That's why it's better if you listen to him. Because if you watch him on a video, it's very distracting. Very, 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 <laughs> very, very, um, my knees became aroused. Just gives you an idea. My knees. And I felt a little bit of tingling in my elbows as well. And I'm sure that my, I just, during listening to him, my fingernails grew. They grew by about half an inch. Well, what are you talking about, mate? Oh, I don't know. I just got carried away. I was just talking about Jason Newland. Oh, no, I've not heard of him. What What does he do then? Just he just he just talks. What What does he Does he juggle? Does he Does he he does what what well what he does is he talks about nothing for about an hour and he calls it let me bore you to sleep okay why what is, is it any good is it does it help you go to sleep well sometimes it helps me go to sleep I don't know why my voice is changing like this uh, sometimes it's just good to have the distraction you know takes away from my thoughts okay well what's wrong with your thoughts well sometimes so okay, wait, wait a second what was why did your voice go so high then don't know really it just happens sometimes I just have these uh, it's just a voice it's a flexible it's like an instrument my voice is very very uh, very in tune with the alignment of the world and my chakras okay can we talk about Jason again what, Jason Newland? Yes, Jason Newland. Well, it can be a distraction, which could be nice. It can be tiring, it can be boring, and it can just send you to sleep. Um, but it can also be company. It, it can feel like you're listening to a human being, just like a, just a genuine person that sounds really boring yeah it is it is that's, that's the point it's actually called let me bore you to sleep what is the point in that I mean seriously what what is the point in listening to someone who's just talking about nothing Is you know, wouldn't you get equally as bored just looking at the wall? Yeah, well, it's not the same. See, looking at the wall, it's not the same. It's kind of listening to the audio, the recordings that let me boil you to sleep it's kind of a stimulation of destimulation or a uh, stimulation leading to reduced stimulation 
through the boredom and through repetition in a sense of listening to him and it gets to the point where every time you listen to one of these recordings you just automatically feel physically and emotionally relaxed and tired and safe to just drift to sleep fully fully physically relaxed pretty much straight away well okay if that's the case why does it last for an hour then I don't know the answer to that but I suppose it's just a time amount of time that sort of progressed to that I didn't start off as an hour but now about an hour is the sort of time that these things occur for sounds boring to me but it's supposed to be boring oh okay what's the bloke's name Jason Newland I thought he said it was Newland no, it's it's actually new land. Ah, oh, that's a lot easier to find on the internet because I would automatically put N E W L U N D because it's you know new land, but new land is N E W L A N D land. Obviously, makes it much easier to find on the internet. That's, that's, that's exactly what Jason thought in uh, 2006 when he launched the website jasonnewland.com and he pronounces it New Land so that people know how it's spelt. So when they're searching for the website or searching for him, they're not putting New Lund in L U N D. But it turns out that everybody knows how to spell the surname. They just pronounce it differently. Wow. We've spent a long time discussing this, haven't we? Yeah, I know. I'm surprised, actually. Didn't expect it to go on quite as long as this. Yeah. We're going to have to find a way to get out of this conversation and to move on. Yeah, I don't know how though. How? How? Perhaps you can stop with that silly voice. What silly voice? Always stop it. Okay. Sorry about that. I'll stop now. Alright, should we just go back to normal talking? Five, four, three, two. One, and I'm back in the room talking about something. I actually I had a, a physical examination yesterday at 12 o'clock. Tell you the time probably doesn't make too much difference to the story but it's kind of valid because it's part of the facts and you know I'm nothing if you know I try to include you know facts into my stories and tell you what's really happened as well as lying you know, I like to mix it up a little bit. So, oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I could really fall asleep. Oh, you know that feeling where you just you just can't wait to lay down on your bed. And just close your eyes 
and you know as soon as you do that's it you know everything else has gone nothing else matters and you can just really enjoy that feeling you close your eyes it feels so damn good and you can kind of feel it before you even do it and you might be in another room so like I'm sitting in my chair but the idea of just walking into my bedroom and lying down on my bed and just falling asleep for however long really feels nice the idea of it really appeals to me right now uh, it would be nice to just and there's something about my body it just gets heavy and my feet get heavy it's kind of weird it's and there's stuff that I need to do before going to bed sometimes I just can't be bothered to do and sometimes I don't do them I just fall onto the bed my lovely big supportive bed it's very supportive I'm lying there going to you know just lying there going to sleep gently and I can hear my bed whispering go to sleep yeah yeah go JJ go to sleep go JJ very supportive bed yeah that was a very weak weak, very weak joke but I don't care because it feels so relaxing I'm going to start talking like a like a, a professional hypnotist you know you start to relax and you feel really calm inside and you can feel, feel your feet and your feet are relaxed and you can feel your calves and your calves are relaxed and your knees and your ankles are relaxed, and your heart and you can feel this and then all oh, under that ways with ooh, the ball the ball and oranges and pears and peaches and then you see there's a big Ferrari and you know, all day long you can feel this way you can really enjoy it oh like that yeah, that's right that's right just keep focusing on your eyes and your eyes are getting really heavy and now looking into the future you can see an old uh, an old self of yourself an old version of yourself and you go back and and you can do it cuddle yourself give you a big hug or else you go back and you know so moving into the future seeing that new you feeling so wonderful inside full of energy and invigoration feeling so good you can feel like superwoman or superman depending on whether or not you have a penis and then you can just really come back to where you are now and really feel good about yourself because you deserve to really experience this sense of belonging that you can really enjoy knowing that you have that experience to draw upon all of those resources that are within you. Oh, feeling your eyelids are still there. And your breathing feels so good. And you really, really feel good. And give me more of your money. Oh, yeah. Read my books and listen to my audios. You can really enjoy giving me your money. So, yeah, I could, uh, I could do that. Yeah, I you can really know. Um, 
Yeah, it could be a celebratory recording, couldn't it? Because I just, uh, I gave you, that's my professional, that's going to be my professional hypnosis voice in the future. I'm talking like this, and you can really enjoy knowing all of those resources and special occasions where you felt wonderful inside, and they can all come back to you all in one one go. You can re-experience all those feelings of feeling wonderful for no particular reason, all at the same time, knowing that you should give me more money. And the happier you feel, the more you want to give me your money. So I could do that. I could be, get, get rich like that. I thought about becoming an ev- evangelical priest. And then you said prick there. Evangelical prick. Evan- ev- is it ev- evangelical? I might not have the right word. You know the... Uh, uh, what do they call him? You know what the... They go on stage and they ask for money, basically. Uh, but they—that's kind of the goal. But they—they they add on the razzmatazz and include uh, religions and stuff like that in order to get the money. In order to get the money, they do religious stuff to get the money. You have to have the money to do the things that the money gives you to make more money. So I don't know. I think I'd be, I might be a good, quite a good preacher. Go on and just blag it, you know, just tell lies. And I'm not saying that preachers lie, but uh, I would. And yeah, I need your money. I've only got seven houses. I need more. Yeah. It's very clever. I've watched um, video footage of some of the top uh, he- uh, healers. You know, the ones that they get people off the st- out of the audience that have uh, been in a wheelchair for the last 20 years and they get them to stand up and then they push them over uh, so yeah it's well, of course I wouldn't I couldn't do that I just couldn't it, yeah it's but the frenzy the frenzy that's there is the same kind of frenzy that you get at a you would have got at a a rally that hit that Hitler had that frenzy of emotion overtaking logic. Well, to be fair, logic and emotion don't really they don't dance well together, do they? So it's that kind of it's. I can I I'm not, I don't want to compare I'm not comparing I'm not I'm so I'm not comparing Hitler to Anthony Robbins I'm just saying that there's I've been I've never been to a Hitler rally but I have been to an Anthony Robbins seminar where there's 10,000 people and the energy is is all emotion even though he's talking logically about stuff, but it's that emotion connected to it. It's very, very powerful stuff. Incredibly powerful stuff. And if Anthony Robbins wanted to use his skills to cause harm to people, he could. But he doesn't. He's an amazing person. And he's... He, he's... Um, he, you know, he's, he's set out to help people. And also to become incredibly rich and famous at the same time. And good luck to him. But there's that frenzy of emotion that is um, created. 
which gets created in these what do they call them this like healing healing things you know the uh, evangelical healing or is it called religious healing or um, I don't know but it's powerful 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 stuff the emotions of thousands of people all kind of focused at the same time on the same thing is hugely hugely powerful so we could use that technique and we could focus on sleeping you could focus on sleeping well getting a better night's sleep having a chance to release stress and worries from your life and just have that time to sleep to rejuvenate you Maybe that energy shared even through the internet because energy does travel through the air. And it's been proven radio waves travel through the air. We can't see them, they travel through the air. Electricity, static various different levels of energy travel through the air so who's to say that energy all energy perhaps travels through the air including the energy of thoughts the energy of emotions, strong emotions still drinking my very lukewarm coffee it's out of this mug and a friend gave it to me but it's from an animal sanctuary in Norfolk um, it's a really rubbish gift it's just <laughs> I shouldn't be cruel but it's that like, that's I don't know that's like one step it's one step above a bar of soap you know Oh, I got you a present. What is it? It's a tampon. Oh, thanks. Lovely. Very thoughtful of you. This did you enjoy your hos your holiday? So, I went to this health check yesterday, and the letter says we are concerned. We are not only concerned about your mental health. We are concerned about your physical health as well. So I thought, okay, yep. Yeah. I have I have them every year. These medical checks because I'm on bipolar medication, uh, mood stabilizers and stuff, uh, antidepressants. So it can have an effect on your body. 
so they check to make sure that you know everything's kind of working okay um, every year just to make sure so it's quite weird because you said you know the medication you're on actually can put, can put weight on I said well in that case stop moaning about me being heavy you know just give it a rest then there's nothing I can do about it is there if it's as she said first of all don't talk to me like that <laughs> no she didn't she didn't she said uh, they all say the same things oh you thought about losing some weight she said yeah I thought about losing weight I have I thought about becoming a superhero as well I thought about you know telling Ashley how beautiful she is I've, I've thought about lots of different things I've thought about running around just with my socks on running around the park and jogging and letting everything just wobble I think about lots of things doesn't mean I do them and she said well none of that was really relevant um, could you and she said well and then I said you know what let me tell you a story and I could she, she just sat down her eyes glazed over it's like people know before I even meet them that I'm just going to bore them and the amount of people whose eyes glaze over it's seriously it's hard to explain it but because I look at people I really, I study people when I talk to them and when I see them and I study their, their behaviour, their, especially facial because the face gives a lot away. I don't always know what it's giving away, but it's giving away something. It, there's something going on inside their mind and I think the only way to really read someone is when you get to know them. You know, it's you get to know signs, don't you? It's it's like living a, an ongoing poker game. I think if you if you're in a relationship with someone, it's an ongoing poker game, and you get to discover all of their little uh, what do they call it? Gives. Uh, you know the words basically so if someone scratches their ear when they've got a good hand good poker hand uh, sort of give gives themselves away uh, there's a name for it I forget what it is and I don't I've never played poker I don't know anything really about it but um, it doesn't stop me talking about anything really I, I talk about anything I don't understand or know anything about it's all part of my charm Tells, that's it. See, there's they're called tells. So if you see, if you're with someone, you know, and you're living with them, and you're waking up uh, to their, I don't know, you're waking up to them, and you see their lovely brown hair when you wake up, and You just want to, you know, give them a little cuddle and that, and you kind of like, okay. You could say, "Well, did you enjoy what we did last night?" And you can watch them. You see what they kind of physically, what they say, what they do, whether it matches, because you know them well enough to know that they might have said, "Yeah, it was, it was, it was good, thanks." Yeah, always all right. You can kind of gauge where the level is. I'm more likely to say, "Yeah, it's all right." Just, I'm I'm a little bad, a bit bad like that. If someone's, if I know someone's wanting me to say something nice, then I kind of refuse to do it. It's it's terrible, really. It can be a bit, but 
um, it's like it's just this little kid inside me that just is a bit cheeky just wants to be cheeky and wants to play around and doesn't want to do the traditional norms of you know of society yes it's it's uh I don't want to live by numbers, you know, like society, do this, like painting by numbers. I don't want to... It's not that I want to be able to draw and paint outside of the lines. I just don't want to paint. I don't want there to be lines. And so her eyes glazed, and after I said all that to her, she said, What? And I said, You know what? I had enough of you. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. And I chucked a big fish at her. I did. I had a big fish. And I just chucked it at her. It landed. Ended on a foot. And she said, what was that supposed to do? I said, I don't know. But it sounded like a good thing to mention. It sounded quite amusing when I thought about it originally. And she said, yeah, but it wasn't though, was it really? You chucked a foot and it landed on my foot. Chucked a foot? I didn't chuck a foot. You chucked a fit. You know I meant fish, not foot. Yeah, well, you know, you said foot. How can I chuck a foot? Now that would be interesting. Now that would be interesting. He chucked a foot. He chucked a foot at a fish. And there was sunshine everywhere. And the whole world lived on Maltesers. Which doesn't make sense to people that don't have Maltesers. In America, they call them something different. Maltesers are very famous in England. They're, if you say Maltesers to anyone, regardless of their culture or religion or whatever, yeah, no matter how tall they are, no matter what, you say Maltesers and they're going to know what they are because they're just they're just famous, famous confectionery. They are. It's the same as if you say morals. The thing is, with Maltesers, everyone's going to picture the box of the Maltesers and they're going to, you know, all see the same thing in their mind. Say the word morals and people perhaps have a different image about what, what they think morals actually represents. Deep, 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 deep. So, her eyes are still glazed over, and I said, okay, so you want me to lose weight? You think I should lose weight? She said, yes. I said, okay. And um, the, before I went in there, so I turned up with about, about ten, 20 to 12, 10 to 12, something like that. And... The lady on the reception says to me, is it okay if we have a support worker join? And come in as well with you, with the person that's doing the examination. I said, yeah, but what, what am I, why? Why? Why, why is the, why is the um, support worker wanting to come in? What? Why? Why? Excuse me. But she'd closed the glass. So basically, it's a glass glass window. She closed the glass window, and she was on the phone to someone else. It's like that's a bit rude. 
So I just went and sat down. And the... There's this big noise. There's this there's a lot of sound. I didn't quite know what it was. So I looked outside uh, the back because they've, they've got this big garden and uh, I remember the, the reception previously she'd said to me that when they bought they got the property it came with about what was it five acres of Lund I said what Lund I said yeah five acres of Lund ok I said oh, I can't do that again she said do what again I said I've, I've done I've done the Lund thing. I've done that too much. It went on way too long. Well, how long did you expect it to go for? I said, I don't know, but longer than, not that long. She said, why, why don't you actually plan what you're going to say then? Why don't you make some kind of a, like a mind map of what you want to say and you can kind of tick it off as you say it. So that's not a bad idea, really. She said, see, I do come out with good ideas. So what do you want to have for dinner tonight? I said, what? She said, what, what are we having for dinner? I said, we, I don't even know you. We don't live together. She said, oh, that's true. I said, why, why are you saying what do you want for dinner? She said, uh, I just thought it would make it a more interesting conversation. So no. That's just weird. <coughs> Excuse me. She said, you're weird. I said, there's no reason for that. And she said, what? I said, there's no reason for you to be rude. She said, what? I said... And the reason she couldn't hear me is there was a helicopter outside. And I said, look, it's a helicopter, wait a second. She said, what? I said, there is a helicopter outside. And there was a gap, it was like she didn't say anything. And there was even more of a gap. And I was just like, I was waiting for her to say something. And I said, aren't you going to answer? She said, no, because there's a helicopter noise. It's too loud. I didn't think you'd be able to hear me. There's a helicopter outside. I said, I know. That's what I said to you. She said, you didn't really need to tell me that. I mean, I can hear it and see it. It's practically the size of the building. I don't think anybody needs to be told that there's a helicopter outside. It's like walking up to someone saying, do you know what? You're breathing, you are. They know they're breathing. They don't need you to tell them. Walking up to someone and saying, oh, by the way, did you realise you were bald? They know they're bald. Yeah, all right, I've got to go on. And then someone walked past and like just randomly farted just fart and just walk carried on walking didn't excuse themselves didn't sort of say sorry didn't even laugh got to at least have a laugh if you're not going to apologise and he just walked away and the worst thing about it is it was smelly, so I went to open a window. But the helicopter blew all the air back in. And it, it kind of, the force of it, the force of the fart smell, hit me. And I literally just, I nearly fell over. That, plus there was, well, there was about like 17 more teasers on the floor. I kind of slipped. I'm guessing there was 17. Just a rough guess. 
The reason is because years ago I used to put Maltesers on the floor because I wanted to know whether or not... Well, the reason for this is... I don't know if you've ever seen it, but there was a thing where people used to stand on eggs. And there's a certain way of doing it where it doesn't break. And I wanted to know how many more teasers I could stand on before they broke and crushed. And so I kind of knew visually by looking roughly how many was there. I don't know if you can hear that. That's birds in the attic doing something. So I had my physical, had a blood test, couldn't find the vein. I said, you know, I've got more than one. She laughed. And uh, eventually found enough. And I had a glucose thing is where they basically prick your thumb or your finger and it take the blood out and then they stick it on a, a thingy to see what the level of glucose is. I suppose that's for checking for diabetes and stuff like that. And the assistant that was just watching said, she asked, does a does little prick hurt? And I started laughing because I'm very, very immature. And then she changed it and she said, how does a little prick feel when it goes in? <laughs> Seriously, that's what she said. How does the little prick feel when it goes in? And I said, I said a few different answers. I, it was one of those questions I had to answer on various levels. And the person that was actually doing the physical examination on me was not pleased with me because I just wanted to blur out loads of stuff, you know, just, you know, it's fine, ask any of my girlfriends. It's, it doesn't, it's fine, you just, they don't even notice it sometimes. It doesn't even wake them up. Not that I've ever done anything like that. I'm just, you know, just as far as, you know, the, the, it doesn't hurt. It's just it goes in the finger. It's just a little, I think people with diabetes have to do it every day, don't they? So just to check their, check their, 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 their levels of blood or whatever. The levels of blood in their body. How many pints do we have? Is it seven or fourteen? Isn't it amazing? I mean, literally, you could take a pint out a day and it'd grow back, wouldn't it? <laughs> the blood grows back. But it reproduces, the body reproduces blood. So, why do we just keep the same old blood in? Why, why don't we just... Wouldn't it be better for us to just produce new blood? I don't know. Maybe not. Get out some of the old. So I had this physical and 
She said, have you got any physical issues? I said, yes. My lower back hurts. She said, have you tried yoga? So what the hell's that got to do with anything? Have I tried yoga? I mean, what, 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 how is that relevant? She said, well, it's good for stretching the body. Uh, uh. She said, why are you making that noise? I said, I don't know, I'm just bored. This this thing has been going on for ages. Apparently, my is it blood sugar level? Oh, I don't know what it is, but it was quite low considering I just had a full meal. So I'd be interested to see what it had been like if I hadn't eaten. This is, I think this is what you call an anticlimax. <laughs> so thank you for listening to the 100th version of this absolutely fantastic series of recordings. I'm sure that you've enjoyed every moment of it. It ha- really has been splendid for all concerned. And sometimes my my toes get tingly just thinking about how amazing the whole experience has been for all of us that have been travelling along on this little journey of boredom. And uh, chin chin to another hundred episodes, which might take, who knows, it might take another year. I've been doing these for nearly a year now. I think... I think I started in Feb- February or March last year. So it's taken me a year to do 100. So, and I suppose when you think about it, 100 in a year, that's one every three days, pretty much, isn't it? That makes sense? Three, yeah. So one in three days, because 300, 600, yeah, so... Sometimes I do them every day, sometimes I don't do them for a week or so. I'm getting more regular, although I didn't do anything for two days this week. Yesterday, the day before, I didn't do nothing. But I was busy doing other things. So take care of yourselves. I should speak to you next time stay safe and enjoy sleeping bye bye